show proper. Here we go. Three, two, one. This war was not started for your private gratification, and you can be damn sure that this army isn't being run for your personal convenience either. You looking for a date? The Morning Stream. Bread goes in, toast comes out. You can't explain that. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to TMS, the show that did not get tricked into laying on a bed in a hotel room somewhere for your fake movie with a hidden camera. I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian. (laughs) Uh, Who says? Uh... Speak for yourself, Scott Johnson. A few of you will get my Borat 2 reference out there. Some of you will. Uh, I don't know if you missed that yesterday. I have not but... seen Borat 2. So is well, it good? Did you see it? It's not out yet. It comes out on Friday. But oh. Oh, okay. a, uh, the, the, a certain the, uh... scene. Let's let's put it this way. A certain very prominent individual got suckered in a scene. <laughs> and it will be all revealed to you when that happens on Friday. Oh, fantastic. Uh, on Prime, I guess they're getting it on Prime is where it's showing up. So, Prime Video. That's right. Borat 2, cool. subsequent movie, whatever they call it. Okay. Subsequent uh, film. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Now, people are saying the names. You'll see it when you see it. It's pretty great. Yeah, I see the name now, and that's awesome. Can't wait. Pretty now great. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, happy 2010, everybody. It's uh, episode 2010. That's the year of Red Dead Redemption, the best game of that entire game generation. Let's just always remember Red Dead Redemption. It's incredible. Mm-hmm played it to completion and it's dlc amazing game and uh, cool. i think about it all the time i think about it often red dead redemption 2 <laughs> reminisce about your time i do and red 10 uh, years red, ago with uh, red dead rdr 2 is a great game the no question but there mm-hmm. was something special about that game and uh i think about it all the time hmm. uh all cool. right no good guesses i want to report back <laughs> nobody <laughs> has any good theories emailed sent via twitter Otherwise communicated to me about the origin of mystery blood yesterday. Nothing. Nobody has an idea. Wow. Wow. Other like, than other than our own conclusions about but well, guesses probably were the made. Dog. Guesses were made, and you're just gonna flat out and say none of them are good. None no, of I'm your saying, guesses were good. I'm saying none of them even guessed. Like they were oh, like just gotcha. Okay, I thought you got guesses. <laughs> no. I got okay. nothing. I got nothing. Like people were just like that's it. Like yeah, I thought somebody shrug. would at least have a wacky <laughs> idea of like Ah, it's because we are near Halloween and you are bleeding from the the stigmata of the freaking fourth moon of the devil's hole or whatever. I thought we'd get some of that. But none of that. That's a bummer. I wish somebody would have actually guessed that. That actually would have been a great guess. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I expected more feedback, I guess. And I'm not saying I'm disappointed in you people, but I'm saying usually you step up to the plate with stuff like this. Normally we get like a flood of stuff. (laughs) Instead, it was all things like, hey, guys, if you had to pick between... (laughs) <laughs> Captain Crunch or freaking, you know, whatever cereal, which one would you pick? Like, it's a lot of that stuff like normal, but sure, this is sure. important. This is important. Um, Yeah, at least we didn't hear from uh, Dr. Jerry or Nurse Liz. No. Oh, I like that we have, I like that we have uh, uh, completely un- unrelated uh, uh, colleagues, medical colleagues in the chat room that we can call Dr. Jerry and Nurse Liz. Yeah. I've, in my mind, they work together and they run their own clinic. Totally. It's like, uh, right, I've, I've, I've they're like the stars of their own uh, sitcom, TMS yeah. sitcom spinoff. It just, it just <laughs> bums me out that. Well, I mean, I guess I could reach out to Jerry and, and just say, "Hey, you ever heard of this? Hey, What's this about?" Look at this fart hole of my blood. <laughs> Tell me where did it come from. <laughs> I thought, I did, you know what? I should have taken a picture of it. Why didn't I do that? Oh yeah, you totally should have. Because oh, I don't know. I don't know. That felt weird. Is it so? That. It's in the wash. It's in the wash. Yeah, it's been washed. A little spray, a little spray and wash on mm-hmm. there. Get the blood out. Yeah, got to get the blood out mm-hmm. before. Uh, CSI gets here to like scan everything with their black light. <laughs> Actually, somebody last night on Core was saying you should get a black light and see if you can find blood somewhere else. Oh, yeah. wow. So yeah. you think, well, so you think that, uh, that not only uh, would there be blood somewhere else, but somebody has gone through and hidden it. Yeah. To show up on a black light. That's what we're thinking. Enough but bleach or whatever. To deepen the, wow. the mystery, uh, we're going to go there. Wow. And All I want right. to search around for it and then I'll say, Kim will say, will there be blood? I'll say, there will be blood, and you will drink your milkshake. I'll say to her. <laughs> That's right. I've lost my boy. I've lost my son. No, here he is. <laughs> oh, he's right over there. Oh, he's right here. <laughs> that movie's so weird. 
Anyway, it's great. I gotta you, watch that again. I, I, I like that movie. I guess I'm, what I'm saying is, if you heard yesterday's show and you heard that story, or you heard me re- reiterate things on Core last night, if you have an idea, just you know where your email is. Up. You know how send to hit, hit send. You know how to hit compose. The morning stream at gmail.com. It's simple. Turn right. All exactly. Right. All right. I appreciate that. Okay, check this out. I want to mm-hmm. talk about why I love Utah a little bit. <laughs> okay. So this went, a little bit, this went viral in a couple of places, ended up on Reddit and, you know, the usual internet places. But, uh, and it's corny, but I really appreciate it this year, maybe more than ever, that these guys did this. So we have two very hotly contested, well, a hotly contested gubernatorial election happening here locally. Mm-hmm. The governor, mm-hmm. long sit- sitting governor, Gary Herbert, is stepping down after I don't know how many terms. And he's been here for a long time. His deputy governor... Uh, uh, I forgot. His, oh, Spencer Cox is his name. Okay. He's running to take that play to to be governor. Mm-hmm. Uh, younger guy, super tech savvy, Republican, conservative guy. And then gotcha. you got the Democrat. I forgot his name. We'll play it in a second so we can hear his name. He's running and is doing pretty well. So it's actually pretty neck and necky. Mm. You know, like a hotly contested seat. And it seems like you know the, it'd be perfect fodder for like negative ads and Spencer Cox yeah. doesn't want you to know that his last name is a synonym <laughs> for a penis or whatever. It's right? a crappy cable company and a euphemism for penis. That's right. <laughs> uh, so you'd think you'd hear, hear a lot of that. Instead, these guys made this joint ad together and it just made me proud. So first this, the Utah Connection. Utah Connection! All right, here's here's the ad. I'm going to play it in full, Brian. It's okay. only 30 seconds. And cool. uh, the only downside of this is without the visual of it, which is them standing like 12 feet apart in a white room. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a white room <laughs> with black, black curtains. curtains. <laughs> sorry. It, it triggered. It, it, like, I hear a lyric and I'm immediately triggered. I'm I, sorry. I, please, I do the same please. thing. I can't help it. So anyway, they're in this room. The problem is they're two guys, similar age, barely have a difference in their voice, so it almost sounds like the same person's talking to each other. But I assure you that these are two distinct individuals <laughs> okay. that right. are talking. And many of you probably saw this on Reddit or all these places it showed up. It went kind of viral on YouTube and stuff. Anyway, here's here's the ad. And, and what I like about it is this doesn't seem to benefit either one of them more than the other. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's why I like it. So here it is. I'm Chris Peterson. And I'm Spencer Cox. We are currently in the final days of campaigning against each other to be your next governor. And while I think you should vote for me. Yeah, but but really you should vote for me. There are some things we both agree on. We can debate issues without degrading each other's character. We can disagree without hating each other. And win or lose in Utah, we work together. So let's show the country that there's a better way. My name's Chris Peterson. And I'm Spencer Cox. And we we approve approve this message. message. And that's it. That's all they're going to do. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. How great is that? How great is that? Now, I'm just saying, I realize it's a it's slightly on the cornball scale. You know, it's a little it's a little. Hey, look at us. Hey, I get it. You know, like it's not. It's a little goofy, but it's so unusual in 2020 or the so last four years for that matter. Yeah, I mean, seriously, this is number one. We needed this in 2020, but number two, it's like we needed this uh, in the political world, regardless of yeah. what year it is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So for me, I am I am going to decide to embrace this, and I like it because you could uh, you could you could you'd approach something like this and go, well, who's benefiting here? Neither of them. We are. We benefit from this message. They're yeah, not benefiting yeah, either right. way on either side of this candidacy. It's a. It's still hotly contested. They still have their debates. They have their disagreements. They have all those things. But mm-hmm. guess what? At the end of the day, that's just part of the process of whittling it down to who's going to get in. And once you're in, you have respect and you try to work it out and you do what you got to do. And I just like that attitude. So everybody else out there says, oh, well done, Pollyanna Scott, with your with your highfalutin uh, concepts. <laughs> I don't care. Double bird to you because I like this stuff yeah. and I'm happy they're you know doing what? it. Here's what here's what that does. Here's what that does for me. Like if that were here in Colorado, um, it would make me feel less disappointed if my guy didn't win, knowing that you know what these guys are these these are all right stand up guys who aren't just gonna take every opportunity to take pot shots at each other. Yeah, they're both decent people. And the other thing is they, uh, well. <laughs> 
chat room's right, and I and I and I preface this: they do sound like the same human being, like they sound <laughs> the same. <laughs> so, well, they, everybody, I, I I swear I can't tell you people from Utah. Part. Yeah, I, I know, I'm we sorry, do. man. You know, it, it finally comes out. You guys all sound the we same. We kind of do. I'm not gonna lie. We kind of do. I'm not. We do. But uh, there's just something about that that I found heartening and. I'm proud of my state, and that's how I—that's how it all should be. Darn so right. take our damn example and quit being dicks, okay? God, man, could you imagine uh, this kind of thing in bigger scale? No, <laughs> in the US I can't. Right now? I can't. I can't you know imagine what? anything. I'd rather you, I'd prefer if you vote for me, but all of a sudden he's like, <laughs> I, I have been putting my my Trump impersonation on hold for so long that. Uh, that it's fallen out of practice. I need to need to get back into workshopping it. I just can't anything from. I like... would prefer <laughs> that you would vote for me, but if you're gonna, <laughs> the voice I need to go and do is the the. Uh, I'm reading from a teleprompter poorly. You're outside trying to trying to be. Um, uh, what's the word? You're, you're Believe trying... me. Yeah. <laughs> but like anything, Congress and higher. I don't see this yeah. happening. Right. Never. Yeah. It. It's, it's unfortunate, but yeah. So anyway, good job, gubernatorial candidate Spencer Cox and the other guy whose name I can never remember. <laughs> I just can't remember. Uh, we just had that's one advantage that Spencer Cox has is he's been around forever because he's lieutenant governor and he's like major tech savvy. So he's got mm. he's he, there's there's kind of he a Silicon Valley ish probably yeah, and there's a Silicon Valley kind of thing in our in in Salt Lake where you know. We're perfect started here. Novell started here. A bunch of companies have their headquarters here or satellite offices here. A lot of tech mm -hmm. in the Valley. And mm -hmm. he's really great with that on the commerce side and all that. So his name is known, I guess is what I'm saying. And the other guy, just <laughs> Daryl, what was it? D something Peterson? Daryl? Shit. Here, it's right here. I just yeah, played it again. I'm Chris Peterson. Chris Peterson. Chris okay. Peterson Cox. <laughs> Peterson Cox. Wow. Hold on a second. I know. <laughs> Peter Cox. The hotly contested battle between Peterson and Cox. Yep. yep. <laughs> Call the old Cox Peter, and uh, it's happening now. That's kind of funny, actually. Brian, I so understand you that you're. <laughs> I understand you're painting mini figs, and that makes me jealous because I wish I was painting mini figs. I guess. Oh I could do man, it, but... dude, it is. It is. Uh, it's been so relaxing, and um, uh, there's a, a listener. He goes by Old Man Quill in our. Um, in our rating group but he's also known here i think in the chat room as ender uh in the, the the frog pants chat room but i've i picked up both the marvel crisis protocol a year ago as well as kickstarted the marvel united so i've got um i've got minifigs that need to be painted in both of those and i'm starting with black widow because i think she's going to be a relatively easy character to paint right you've got an all black costume with some gray piping and a gold belt and gold uh, uh stingers i think they call them on, on her wrists and then the red hair and blah 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 sure. but i figure compared to like something like dr strange <laughs> she's gonna be a much easier easier character to paint but i've been um uh i've been learning all these new techniques about painting minifigs that i've never used before number one uh primer right here's the here's the cool thing like i was oh primer okay i've got some gray primer and that'll hold the paint really well there's a technique and i'm wish i could remember what it's called actually i do have it right here it's called uh zenithal zenithal priming got it and or zenith zenithal because it's a zenith you paint the whole minifig black and then you do a cone around the top of the minifig in, in gray. And then you do a straight down shot with white primer. Oh, and what that okay. does, I could actually show you because I've got, you know what, I'm going to grab them real okay, quick. Okay, let's see. I was going to say, I want to see a sample here. Let's see what Brian's got there. Uh, while Brian does that, uh, the closest I've come to painting a minifig was uh, It creates figures. cool highlighting. Yeah. So here, for for a smaller example, is the Black Widow primed but not painted yet from uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Okay. And you can see you look down and it's like all white, but you know. Oh, I see. Okay, I get it now. Better example is this one, which is from uh, Marvel United. Okay. Oops, let's get some color. And you can see, like, it looks like there's a spotlight shining down on her. Yeah. 
uh, but that's really just the paints. And the, um, the, the paint's going to give you that. Imp- that's very cool. Yeah, as I paint red in her hair and the gray piping and stuff like that, it's going. To, some of that primer is going to show through, right? And um, uh, and and look like it's a you know it's going to look like not just a three dimensional minifig, but a highlighted three dimensional minifig. Yeah, you keep that lighting effect after you do it or after it's done. Yeah, that's exactly. very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. So, so I'm having a lot of fun with that. And uh, I mean, I've got about <laughs> 40 figures probably to paint at this point. But uh, <laughs> so are you doing uh, what do you listen to while you're painting minifigs? Because I'm sure there's music going on. What do you do? What's yeah, your... I listen to whatever I have to listen to for Coverville. So yesterday it was uh, John Lennon solo tracks being covered by other people. Mm. So oh. I pick songs for, for the right. show. But um, watching the wheels. Just like starting over, jealous guy, yeah. mind games, yeah, all the instant hits, instant karma, all yeah. the hits, all yeah. the hits that were bought air. Spinning the hits. What do you think about this? Uh, some McCartney news going on. Uh, oh no, I haven't heard the McCartney news. It's not bad. Um, okay, God, it's Paul <laughs> Let's McCartney. Hold on, what did I read? There's something big coming out. Oh, he made a lockdown album. Uh, all by himself. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because of course he can. I mean, it's called McCartney 3. It comes out this year. Mm. Says the tracks. Wow. The long-awaited sequel to McCartney 2, which came out like 1972 or something. Yeah, right? And he says mm-hmm. this is all recorded alone in lockdown by himself. And uh, that could be interesting, you know? Like, yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder if it'll f- uh, feature songs that uh, have a lot of goofy rhyming couplets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like oh blah de oh blah da and biker like an icon and <laughs> that's your favorite. Come himself. on, it's your favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually do really like oh blah de oh blah da, but that is his. That is like when you can identify as you're listening to Beatles songs, you can identify Lennon McCartney compositions that lean a little more uh, McCartney than Lennon. What if it's just a 20 minute? I got my mind set on you. Cover <laughs> temporary secretary. That's another good example. Yes. Uh, you got my mind sending you. That's fine. Hey, look. Uh, You're okay with that? Harrison Harrison's was a cover too. Don't don't forget. Mm-hmm. No, I know. He just he kind of. I mean, in some way, you always like it when someone takes a cover and then makes it theirs. And it's like, oh, that's who I associate it with. In mm-hmm. this case, I don't know if that's a good thing because that's the worst song ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. I wish I liked it. Is it is right there. Made in rock down. Oh, right. He calls it rock down. Rock Very good. down. An array oh. of vintage instruments, including Bill Black's Bill Black's upright bass, a five-piece Ludwig drum kit, ooh, and a 50, 1954 Fender Telecaster. Ooh. I told Ringo to f off when he called and asked to be there. <laughs> Bo, can I play drums on your new album? <laughs> Are you no, okay if off, I Ringo. Play drums. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but I play drums. <laughs> play the drums. <laughs> 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 That's a conversation I would love to be a fly on the wall for. <laughs> well, all right. Good luck with your mini cool. figures. Yeah, and, uh, have fun with that. Can't fun wait to see that. the finished products. Uh, yeah. Someone in the chat room, I think it was J.K. Grammer, says, "What about Modoc? You gonna do Modoc?" I've already done Modoc, and um, I wish he was down here because I could show you. He was the first one I painted, and uh, it was before I knew the the shading technique. But I was using stuff like washes glazes and dry brush mm. techniques on him to learn those um to learn those techniques and i actually am really happy with the way the modoc came out so i'll nice. put a i'll put a photo in the uh, tadpool um facebook page i like the modoc pages. modoc's great he's the, he's the best canvas to start with you did the right thing he kind of is that. and he's a good he's a good size yeah. i painted him completely on the sprue mm-hmm. um as opposed to taking him off, assembling him, and then painting him, mm-hmm. which is what I did for Black Widow. I'm yeah. trying to decide what I like better. You couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do the shading thing, keeping them on the sprue. So, um, the sprue being the the tree, the, the the plastic tree that all the pieces come on. That's the judge who isn't Paul Hollywood on. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Sprue. That's the the replacement. Mary Berry's replacement is a uh, sprue. Sprue. And, uh, sprue Hollywood. It's her name. Oh, that's the other cathartic thing right now is that I really love is that is just watching those week after week. I know it's cool. You know, know, as much as I, you know, I'm, I'm always torn on what I like, whether I'm, whether I'm super in on week to week or if I just prefer binging, like there's so much, Mm -hmm. I'm so Mm -hmm. much in kind of back and forth on that. Yeah. I actually really like that that bake off thing is once a week and it's 
piecemealed to me. Yeah, and it's because it's. I think it's it's airing right now live on the BBC, and we're getting episodes just a few days after they air there. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, I like it. I like how they do it. I do too. And that's not a show that you like. Oh no, I'm waiting till all the episodes come out so I can binge. So so that plot through lines I can follow and I don't miss. It. <laughs> it's like yeah, there's no plot through lines that you need to worry about following story arcs of uh, of of uh, Lottie and her rising dough you yeah, know <laughs> yeah. i am getting my head around the new the the little bald guy too the the hairless little yeah matt lucas yeah he's all yeah. right he's all right he's all right he's uh his his i like his self-deprecating idiot shtick yeah. basically is his yes. calling card that's because he's really good at it yeah if you're good at that you're good with you're good with me took me a few episodes yeah. but I, I i'm down with him yeah so well done small albino-ish looking bald people you've done it <laughs> all right uh we've come to the point of the show where we're gonna do these i don't watch the news time for the news brought to you by brought to you by coverville it's gonna happen today but because the uh shipment got delayed from yesterday to today i don't know exactly when it's gonna happen so mm. here's what you do go to coverville.tv and then hit the button that looks like a little bell you'll get notified when i go live and then you can come listen to some john lennon covers to celebrate his what would have been his 80th birthday and a brand new world premiere cover that uh, you can only hear on coverville uh that's at uh, coverville.tv probably hopefully right around 1 p.m mountain time if things work out really well but if not then sometime this afternoon by the way, just for a correction, I mean no offense to anyone who is small, bald, uh, super white, or any of that, okay? <laughs> just playing around. It's a public figure. I'm just goofing off. I love yes. all people. All people are great. Right. Um, how old is Paul love McCartney? Love all several. Paul McCartney is. I'm going to guess, I'm gonna guess not, he hit uh, 80, 79. Is he, is he? I think he was younger than John. Okay, born in 42. So. Okay, so he's uh, uh, 78. Okay, he's getting there. He's getting there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I guess it depends on on if his birthday's already passed or not. I think he's December born. What's his birth date? Uh, oh shoot. Oh, sorry. I closed it. Uh, it is December, something. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, right. he's pushing uh, seventy nine. Pretty good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Not bad there, old man McCartney. I buried Paul. I buried. I buried. Him. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be ironic, though, when... I'm not saying this is going to happen for sure, but if Ringo <laughs> passes away before Paul does... Right. And the, the irony only Beatle that... left is Paul McCartney. The irony right. is too much, Brian. I'll, it'll knock me over and I'll hit my head on a, on a stone right. or something. Because the, like, <laughs> the whole thing you and I growing up was Paul is dead and they were faking it the whole time and there were all these hints, he's barefooted mm -hmm. on the Abbey Road album or this backward masking song says Paul is dead, Paul is dead. He must be yeah. dead. Like we were fed this line and then the irony is he'll outlive them all. That's right. Or his clone I want to will. say all that stuff did happen before we were alive, but we did catch up to it once we, uh, once we were born. Oh, really? I feel like that was like an early 80s thing that was being jammed down my throat. Oh God, no! It was during it was. Uh, I mean, it was Beatles songs where this was happening. So it was like. Um, right, but didn't they figure uh, it out till later? Like, uh, they started seeing the. No, no, like 1966 or 67 when the. Um, the White Album was that the first of it? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's the oh there's a common search for when did the Paul is dead rumor start. Yeah. Oh, there's an entire Wikipedia article. Sweet. All right. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah, it's a great it's a great read. Uh, I, thought, I think I think the White Album was the initial you're, you're start right. of that. And in, that would have been uh, in early 67. 67, a rumor mm -hmm. circulated. That's when the first rumor happened was 67. Mm -hmm. that he died in a traffic accident along the M1 motorway. Um, Let's see. Yeah, in the 80s, the, uh, the big mystery was, will we get Paul McCartney out of Japan because he's being held there for marijuana possession? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that was the... <laughs> That was the mystery in the 80s that we were working on. <laughs> no, you're totally right. Um, I'm trying to skip ahead here to see if they dive into the 80s at all. Oh, okay. Religion motivated murder of Lenin 80. They think, okay, is that the Yeah, you're right. It was all before us. But for whatever reason, there yeah. seemed like there was a lot of radio documentaries and like stuff. When I was there might have been. There might have been something about that because that stuff is so fascinating how, um, how a rumor like that starts. So spontaneously, dumb. and then 
the Beatles kind of said, all right, well, you know, we'll we'll play around with that. Yeah. Imagine the internet being around then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Just be queuing on my of... death has been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Oh, there, yeah, no, Claire Gack, I can't go near YouTube conspiracy videos. I'd rather pull my toe nails off. <laughs> Freaking F that, dude. Can't deal with yeah. it. Uh, oh, all right, geez. here's a story about a disturbing Twinkie, which... Uh, <laughs> disturbing Twinkie. That's my chat room name. Yeah, I played guitar for like two years for them in the 90s. They never paid me. <laughs> disturbing Twinkie, those bastards. Oh, such, so many hits I know. from Disturbing Twinkie. Oh, they were, I mean, they were one hit after they another. Were, uh, they were a hit machine is yeah. what they were. Then they just disappeared like a calorie-less Disturbing garbage. Twinkie is my <laughs> Matt Lucas cover band. <laughs> <laughs> Well, wait, is Paul McCartney actually Count Chocula? Jeez, date shave Maddox, where does that come from? Oh, because he's got the jowls now. Okay, I get it. Oh, okay, all right. That's fine, that's fine. Let's make let's make fun of that man's appearance. Why not? Just like I did. <laughs> Just like, like I did for Matt Lucas. Uh, anyway, a disturbing Twinkie that has so far defied science. Last week, Craving Sweets, Colin Purington remembered the Twinkies. He purchased them back in 2012. This is not going to be that impressive because I have a Twinkie older than this, and it's like hard mm-hmm. as a rock and looks like a Twinkie. So Way more disturbing. Yeah, yeah. it's a little more of a disturbing Twinkie. Uh, it says, there's no desserts in the house. You get desperate, he said. He went down to the basement, retrieved an old box of snack cakes, fully intact or fully intending to enjoy several, busted out the Twinkies. Now, instead of uh, waiting a couple more years, in part because he was just so bored with the pandemic, uh, he says it's terrible. It's just mind-numbing after a while. Oh, we know, buddy, we know. Mm-hmm. Like many people, he believed Twinkies are basically immortal, although the official shelf life is only 45 days. I didn't know that. They definitely last longer than 45 days. Yeah, they but, exist longer. Yeah, they, <laughs> whether they taste good or, uh, or not right. is a good question. We're about to find out. Uh, he says he removed a Twinkie from the box, unwrapped it, it looked fine, and he took a bite. Then he retched, <laughs> says this article. He retched. He retched. Ugh. When was the last time you heard "retched" used in a sentence? Yeah, I mean that's a that there's a specific noise that goes along with retching. Yeah, <laughs> retching is it's not the same as just barfing it. Anyway, it tastes yeah. like an old sock. He says, "Not that I've eaten an old sock." Well, then how do you know, Purington? I, I like, but again, this is the difference between UK and US. Like you say, it tasted like an old sock. He says, "It tasted like old sock." <laughs> like, like that's. One of the Jolly Rancher flavors. You got uh, cinnamon, peppermint, and old sock. Yeah. Or the, it's like a, ah, yes. Calvin <laughs> Klein this year will release old sock. <laughs> That's right. Gwyneth Paltrow's new candle fragrance, old, old sock. sock. This smells like my foot, she says. <laughs> Um, anyway, he says, uh, that's when he examined the two other Twinkies. Two looked weird. One had a hard, uh, dark colored blemish the size of a quarter on it. The other Twinkie was completely transformed. It was gray, shrunken, and wrinkly, like a dried moral mushroom, he says. Wow. None so, of this, uh, this sort of should impress me. It just doesn't because I've seen a worse Twinkie. I own one. I have one. Right, but the fact that they these were all still wrapped in their bags, still sealed, yeah, supposedly. Yeah, wrapped in plastic. And yeah. the differences on all of these are amazing. Like, your Twinkie does not look like that shriveled up one on the left. No, mine looks like the one on the far right. Um, yeah. The one... The one on the left, I don't know. That's just a yeah. That is mummified, yeah. mummified Twinkie. But what is how how were they produced differently? Or maybe there's a hole in the plastic or something. But how are they produced so differently that you'd get three very different results? Yeah. See, I don't. That's a thing. I, I maybe I don't want to know. Maybe I don't want to understand. Yeah. You know what? You what I, what I mean, here's my temptation. I'm looking at this photo. All three of them lined up. Mm-hmm. I want to put eyes, shocked eyes on the middle one, and that's his mouth with the brown mark. And so he's just going, <laughs> looking oh! over at the other one. Oh, oh Philip, what happened? What happened to you? Oh, right. Philip. Yeah. <laughs> I bet somebody uh, would smoke that left one, though. Oh, yeah. Are Wrap that me? up in a doobie of and course. have a little Twinkie. Of course. Smooth Ooh, little Twinkie. Look at the cross section one where the one they cut it open. And oh, it. there's a cross section. Hold on. Yeah, scroll down there. Look at that. Yeah, almost like right. a caramel feeling. Ew! Yeah, you don't want that. Oh, and then they have a close up. Oh God! Of the oh, that's one. a close up. But look at the hair growing on that one. Is that plastic? What is that? Well, it's the it's still wrapped in plastic. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Like you can look at that top picture and see that the plastic wrap is still on it. You get the 
the little the top and bottom little pull apart edges. Oh, here they But are. seeing inside there, it's like uh, looking like a, the, the surface of an alien planet. There's video of them drilling into it. Ew. Oh, they drilled into the uh, severely little... colonized cake was quite challenging to sample. Thanks little... to a bone marrow biopsy <laughs> tool, we made quick work of it. <laughs> Ew, it's got now this cross section of the dead Twinkie. Oh Damn. man, this is this went places. All right, they got me then. Yeah, all right. Uh, thank you for making me not even want to have a fresh Twinkie. Yeah, last time I ate a Twinkie, boy, it's been years. Mm -hmm. Maybe ten years. Well, wow. like yeah, the, I can't think of the last time I actually ate a Twinkie. And if I did, it was like a quick like half a one at a party and threw the rest away sort of thing. They're not good, man. Mm -mm. Twinkies are no. bad. Now, ding-dongs, on the other hand. Zingers. Oh, zingers. Give me a, a ding-dong any day of the week. I'll take Go a ding-dong. That's, that's yours, a, Jamie. Yep, I'll take a ding-dong. I'll take a zinger. Any zingers. All the flavors of zingers, all mm -hmm. in. Oh, yeah, right. And Hostess owns them now. They used to be Dolly Madison, but they got bought out. Uh, so Hostess pretty much... Uh, monopolizes all snack cakes these days it feels like <laughs> they have a monopoly on snack cakes it's totally yeah. true yeah. uh leah thompson you remember her she's a person of course that? of course yeah she's uh marty mcfly's mom and you know other things mm -hmm. she's yeah. howard the duck's girlfriend there you go <laughs> right rolling around in her panties i remember on that bed that's the thing i yep. remember yeah <laughs> so that's a thing because you know you're <laughs> you're young and you notice these things yeah absolutely anyway I always liked her, but uh, Leah Thompson revealed she took home her prosthetic breasts from the Back to the Future Part 2 set. Oh, and those were not good no. prosthetic breasts. No, no, they were not. Uh, she said she made sure to leave the set of the Back to the Future Part 2 with a very special souvenir, or a pair of them. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're wrong. Speaking to people in celebration of the Back to the Future's 35-year anniversary and the release of Back to the Future, the Ultimate Trilogy, the 59-year-old actress, she's 59? Hmm. Uh, says she took her prosthetic breasts home after filming the project after it was complete. Uh, from Back to the Future Part 2, I took my boobs home. She tells People Magazine. Sorry, PEOPLE! <laughs> right, yes. It's all caps. <laughs> Never forget. Says I didn't want them to fall into the wrong hands because it actually uh, it's actually a cast of my actual breasts inside. Mm. Ew. So wait, she... Uh, bleh. I mean, I, so, it's fine, but like... But what's she... I guess she's worried some weirdo's gonna be like... Gonna like make a life cast, a, a, a reverse life cast of her actual boobs, so yeah. they can say, "Well, here's an, here's exactly what <laughs> Leah Thompson's boobs looked like in 1985," <laughs> which is kind of creepy, I guess. That's extremely creepy. Yeah, because yeah, in '85 she would have been 20. I mean, she was uh, of legal age, but still, that's just mm -hmm. creepy. That's weird. Anyway, um, it says here. So I was like, "I'll take these home. Thank you very much." But they got really smelly because they were latex, and I threw them away. <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, like an old Twinkie. Yeah, like a, <laughs> a uh, pair of Twinkies, basically. <laughs> I have so little memory of two. I remember disliking two so much that I've I maybe seen two once in my life, mm -hmm. and I've seen the first movie dozens and dozens of times. I've seen the third yeah. movie a dozen times, but I've yeah. never seen more than that first time of two because I thought two was bad. And I know Did, a lot of uh, people think I'm wrong, but I think it's bad. Oh no, it's absolutely bad. It is the worst of the three. But did we? We never watched it for uh, for film sec. I could have no, sworn we did. We should, but we haven't. I think that totally thing's hard should. to. It never shows up anywhere. No, oh, maybe that's the deal. Well, we've broadened, um, we've broadened our search selection, so maybe we find it finally. I don't know. Increase more streaming services. Um, the great thing about two is that Biff's Casino is the plaza that we do our. TMS Vegas uh, things at oh right with the big head yeah. his big head was put up there and all that his big head put up there yep exactly yeah, downtown uh, downtown Vegas so right. a bunch of people in the chat are like I prefer two over three or two is right on par with one really wow really no. uh -uh. nice to then you had the whole weird switcheroo of like wait a minute how come Marty's girlfriend is Elizabeth Shue now that doesn't make sense I just don't like the like. Look at the weird future stuff. Guess what? That's no. People still have skateboards, yeah. but they hover now. And they like, hover, and yeah, uh, your yeah. shoes inflate. Well, I guess that that happens. But and then you get uh, the do, the thing I do like is the very end when you got uh, 
um, not Eugene Levy. It was another guy from SCTV as the post postman delivering the letter from Doc oh. Brown that has been. Right. This has been sitting in our. <laughs> gonna do it in the doc brown voice this yeah. has been sitting in our mail office for years and we finally delivered it we were wondering if you could shed some light upon it yeah I'll, I'll say this okay oh it is on netflix right now weird is it mm, we should put that on maybe list. that's a uh, november yeah because we'll be done with october in a couple weeks and then we can jump that's into right. movies that aren't yeah. scary yeah. uh but but three i really like three so f off on your yeah. re- mean talk about yeah. three three's good three's right. great I know I'm biased toward westerns, but it's still you get a you get a little kid, uh, Jules or Vern, pointing at his penis. Yeah, going. <laughs> These are my sons, Jules and Vern. Quit poking your penis, Vern. Yeah. If you haven't seen that video, <laughs> seek it out. It is one of the strangest uncut things in a get film. Get that creepy look off your face, Vern, and quit poking your penis. <laughs> That's so weird. Has anyone approached yeah. that kid and asked him what he was doing? Like now, he's like yeah, right, 35. He's like 25 or something, right? Yeah, or he's even, like a 30-year-old yeah. or something. Somebody find that guy and say, what were you doing that day? <laughs> and if it's just as simple, simple as, oh, I had to pee, okay. I was signaling to my mom that I had to pee. Yeah, and that's fine. That's fine. Like, kids have to pee. Mm-hmm. But I just mm-hmm. want to know for sure what the heck you were doing. <laughs> Well, what was up with the director saying, yeah, we'll use that one. That's a take. Uh, right. <laughs> he just didn't notice, I guess. No one in editing noticed. Right. Or if they did, they... I mean, chat room keeps saying he had to pee. No, I assume so. But yeah. Because he said yeah. so? Oh, is there a YouTube of this? Oh, no, they're just yes. showing the... <laughs> It's not the guy talking, though. It's just the video. But uh, I want to oh, know... Yeah. I want to... Did he tell you... Did, has he said out loud, for the record, I had to pee? Because that's what I'm asking. I'm not asking if we all assume he had to pee. Because I know, because that's what I assume too. Like here, yeah. here's the here's the scene. I'm not gonna do audio, but look at this kid. Point, point, point. Come, come, come. <laughs> <It's> so weird. <laughs> yeah, he's going. Bring me, bring him. Come over here, wiener. <laughs> right. Like what? right. Exactly. It's Just, almost like uh, like he's doing the uh, the the yeah, made you look kind of symbol. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. It's so weird. So that some... poor kid, though, like now immortalized on YouTube as creepy kid from Back <laughs> to the Future Three. Maybe, maybe he. That's probably why we haven't heard anything. He's just he's changed his name. He's hidden. Movie he's, Canada uh, years ago. He's not even living here in the states anymore. He's like, oh really? No, I don't know. I made that up. Oh, I thought you. I thought you might have uh, googled him. No, <laughs> I can't find anything on this guy. So if somebody oh, out really? there. Uh, We'll probably get answers on this instead of my mystery blood. Like, where's the kid? Probably. From? Well, this, yeah, this, this is, uh, this has information that's Googleable. Mm-hmm. He's in hiding. <laughs> Chat room. <laughs> yeah, all I these be years surprised. later, he's got a beard a mile long, hiding in a cave somewhere. I can't go out. They've all seen me point at my junk. <laughs> uh, oh, TVZ oh, gone. Jeez, that got dark. Yeah. TVZ gone. I'm not even gonna repeat that. <laughs> me either. Oh, wait. Daniel Evans. Vern points at his crotch. While some have attributed this as a sign towards Jennifer, it has been hypothesized that the child actor was trying to signal to someone, possibly director Robert Zemeckis, that he needed to urinate. Okay, so still just well, speculation. No confirmation. I do like... Some have attributed this as a sign towards Jennifer. What's he trying to sign towards Jennifer? Yeah, what does that mean? Hey, Jennifer. Yeah. Hey, Jennifer. If this thing with Marty doesn't work out, hubba hubba. I got, <laughs> I got, a I got what you need. I got a little something for you over here. <laughs> Maybe you have a little dance with the flux capacitor in my pants. Yeah. That can't be it. All right. Someone let me know if you know. If someone knows, let us know. Final story, a Iowa man in the news. Mm-hmm. Now that we've learned all about Leah Thompson chucking her boobs. <laughs> Smelly latex boobs. Uh, an Iowa man who stole election sign goes on to steal a newspaper that reported it. I don't know why I think she's <laughs> Great. A stealing one paper is going to do anything, but okay. Uh, it's an Iowa businessman. His initial crime of stealing an election sign only garnered him three sentences on the third page of a small town newspaper, but his strange attempt to cover it up made national headlines. Peter de Jaeger, which is French for the Jaeger, uh, his name first appeared in the September 2nd edition of the Dickinson County News as part of a small roundup of local crimes after he was caught taking a Joe Biden sign from somebody's yard, a charge he later pled guilty to. 
Uh, the same morning, the newspaper learned that some copies of the latest edition had gone suspiciously missing at stores throughout the region. So multiple stores all over the place are saying, gotcha. hey, where's our papers today? <laughs> our newspapers are gone. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the editorial uh, decision at that point was just to treat the lawn sign theft like any other small crime. Uh, but when the newspaper started re- uh, disappearing, well, then it started to become a stranger issue, says uh, Dickinson County News staff writer Seth Boyles. Uh, he sure does. As it happens, g- uh, guest host Peter Armstrong. Oh, he told this to this Peter Armstrong guy. Gotcha. None of that yeah. matters. Uh, I suppose it's one of those cases which the severity of the crime isn't what makes it news. It's the bizarre nature of the crime that made the news. All right. So the important thing here is there's there's a photo of this dude on security camera in a uh, convenience store kaifing a paper. Stealing a yeah. stealing newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. Going, I don't want anybody to know about my uh, I took indiscretions I. and why am I Australian? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. I'm from Iowa. <laughs> It just looks like you'd sound like that. He's an Australian guy. He's got the worst come over too. My God, that is a uh Yeah. That is a come over. Yeah, I have hell. some pity for that hair. I feel mm-hmm. bad about it. Maybe that. you ought to steal a little uh per uh per, 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 no, what's the propecia? Not propecia. What's the hair shampoo, hair growing shampoo that I obviously never tried? Uh propecia. Who's propecia. Yeah. Propecia? Okay. I always think minoxidil, but that's the Simpsons version. Remember that? I think that's the I think that's the chemical in the shampoo that oh, makes your hair grow back. Is well, I thought they made that. Rogaine. Up. Rogaine is the Rogaine. yeah. That's probably better. Yeah. Rogaine. That's right. Rogaine. That's what happens when Ro joins the raid team later than he meant to. He comes in late. And he, he's, <laughs> everyone has Rogaine. What um, is uh, it was? Propecia is a. Oh, it's a drug you take as opposed to the the um, shampoo. Uh, someone in the chat. This comes up That's a lot. That's the problem. I rubbed the pr- the pill on my head and nothing happened. That's why I look like this. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, by the way, oh, there's video of him stealing it. Hold on. <laughs> really? Check this out, chat. Look at him. All right. Do-do-do. And he's like, oh, hey, hello, ma'am. Uh, could you go back in the back room and see if there's a thing for me? Sweet. Do you have any more uh, Windex in the back? Could you please look for me? Yep, Thank there you. There she goes. She wanders off. He goes, takes the paper. Tucks it away. I'll yeah. be taking these copies of the Iowa Citizen Review. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye-bye. And then he's out of there. Oh, that kind of person just makes me want to pop him in the head. Freaking yeah. dick. <laughs> he's such a weenie. Exactly. How How is Mildred going to read the horoscope for today if you take <laughs> the newspaper she was planning on buying? <laughs> Small town news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Wendy will be here. we got some therapy Thursday to get through, which uh, will be fun and great. So come on back cool. for that. In the meantime, Brian has brought with him a song selection, which I'm just dying to hear. Oh, this is great. Uh, Minneapolis artist Bobby Cabello. What do you seem to understand? I'm not locked in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> You're locked in here with me! I usually do. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, this is The Morning Stream. All right, we're back. Got a little modest mouse vibe out of that. Yeah, I could hear that. Yeah, which I like a lot. I like that band. It's cool. It's very cool. Chilled me out. Made me chill. Once again, that is Milo, M-I-L-O-E, the brand new single, Change Your Mind, from his upcoming EP, EP, EP. which is called uh, Greenhouse. Nice. Check it out. Greenhouse is where you make your, uh, your, uh, your, your plants when, you don't have, when it's cold outside. That's right. That's right. Exactly. I know a lot of things, Brian. I know stuff about things. <laughs> All right. No flies on you, Scott. No, none. Zippo. All right. We're going to get my sister in here. And I'm actually going to pause because she's offline. Let's see what's going on. Oh. Oh, the nerve. I mean, last week it was. The noive. The noive of it. Okay. Let me just text her. Real quick here. Mm-hmm. See that we're okay. <laughs> All right. I have asked her if she is good. She will now you're reply. Coming? You coming to show? You come to show? You come to do show? <laughs> <laughs> and 
Any uh, <laughs> any update from your freight people? Nothing? Nope. Nope. Got a nice little view of the outside. My car parked outside. Tina's car parked outside. Waiting. Yeah. Just Garage waiting. empty. Ready for uh, ready for delivery. And it's just waiting like a like a proper citizen. Just doing your, That's right. doing your side just of it. Just doing my parking duty. That's right. Duty. Uh, I am sci-fi. I hope not. I don't know. It's it's just weird because in the last, really in the last week or so, uh, Twitch started dropping the DMC whatever it is takedown hammer like hardcore, and so I don't know what that means for us. I'm I haven't got a notice yet, <laughs> but if I do, it may mean we have to do post again. I don't know. I hate it, but yeah, we'll see uh, how it goes. Hello. Oh, there's Wendy. Hello. Hold on, I gotta start this thing up. Hey, look at that, everybody! It's Wendy. We gotta play this. Hold on, where is it? I can't find it. Where's Wendy's thing? Everyone knows it's Wendy. Check it out, everybody. It's Wendy. It's Wendy Dunford. It's my sister, okay? We're related, literally by blood. Not like the Koreans in our family. Those weirdos. Just kidding. They're great. We love them. Uh, but Wendy and I come from the same loins, and it's fun to be here and hang out with my sister when I don't get to see her very often because she lives in Minnesota now, but she comes on Thursdays and shares her expertise with us on a little segment we call Therapy Thursday. Yeah, that's right. She's a practicing therapist. We are not. Therefore, her advice matters more. Wendy, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> that's uh, great. Glad to be here. Oh, that's good. Uh, been a been a crappy couple of weeks uh, around here uh, for reasons. If people have heard the Skim Show, they've heard the reasons. But Wendy knows some of it. Um, man, uh, it turns out like a lot of life, hard life things happen all the time. But yeah. when they happen during a, during a pandemic year, there sure seems to be an it's amplification amplified. of it, right? Like, yeah, it's really true. It just gets really worse, true. and I don't like. I it. have to keep. I find myself having to keep reminding people that there is a pandemic. Like, mm. not that they don't rem they don't know. It's that everything feels so much harder, and they're thinking it's just that particular thing. Yeah. But it's it is really like every one of us has like twenty bricks in our backpacks, and then something happens. Right now, we got to run up a hill. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. it's a lot. It really is a lot. Yeah, it's a it's a lot to take, but. Um... Partly why we do this segment is to help people out with the with the, the things they may think are just them, but maybe it applies to a bunch of people and do a little good in the world. So we're going to do that today with an email we got from L, and it's along the lines of your self care question. You had pushed out, you know, oh. hey, let's talk about self care more, um, that sort of thing. And so we're gonna we're gonna kick it off today by reading this email. It starts like this: Dear Wendy, uh, with an I. <laughs> it says in parentheses, uh, and I cannot forget Scott and Brian. Self care. It sounds easier than it really is. My struggle with it is finding the motivation to do it. Um, I feel like this. Well, whatever. I related to this email quite a bit, which we can get into if we want to. Anyway, mm -hmm. I struggle with finding the motivation to care for myself. I would give everything I have to uh, to those closest to me before doing anything for me. Within the past year, I've started seeing my body and myself. Uh, as something wonderful and capable of many things, accepting of the frustrations that come with the weaknesses I deal with, i.e. chronic pain, depression, eating disorder, infertility, etc. <clears throat> I know I need to put myself first and take the ox oxygen mask and then put it on others. But how? I have some life-threatening allergies and restrict my activities outside of my home. When I go to work, I put, on, I put all the energy I can muster into that. My job can be very physical and emotional as well, working as a fabric and craft or working at a fabric and craft store. Oh, those places. They just put me right <laughs> to sleep. Uh, anyway, whatever. My wife loves them. Uh, right now, stuff that brings me joy slash happiness, um, I am too tired to do. Sometimes I don't know where I want to be. Going for a pedicure is something I can treat myself to, but that's where my ideas run out. Also, being a mom, wife, and a person in general is tough right now. And yes, I'm involved with therapy. Thanks for any words of encouragement or wisdom. Uh, so not a ton of really micro details here, but somebody who's just having a hard time giving a giving a poop about themselves, but but is totally happy to be helping those around them, which probably isn't all that unusual, right? Like, um, seems like people probably go through that. But I really related to this because right now, I it's easy for me to go. Oh, Nick uh, ran out of gas. Let's go. Get, let's go help. Or mm -hmm. uh, this, the neighbor got COVID. Let's do dinner and take it and leave it on the porch. Uh, let's, you know, like that stuff just comes no Taking problem. Care of others right now, yeah, a lot easier. But for me, I'm just like, I should run. I should go do 30 minutes on the treadmill. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I should, but maybe I'll just lay on this couch. Like I'm just mm-hmm. I'm kind of at that stage right now where doing anything for me and worrying about my health, my mental attitude, my whatever is very much taking a back seat to just other emergencies or other things that crop up. And I feel like any downtime I have, I'm just waiting for the next thing where I can help elsewhere instead of saying, all right, well, why don't you give yourself a nice hot bath? Or why don't you take a day off? Or why don't you? I'm just having a really hard time communicating that to myself. And that feels a little bit like what she's describing. So, Wendy, how do you want to go here? And where can we where can we go with self-help uh, from this point? Question. I have a question first. Yeah, do you actually make the dinner? Uh, no, Kim does most of that stuff. <laughs> and I, I'm not making fun of you. I genuinely want you to make dinner and drop it off on someone's porch. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I mean, I could. Like we're so the way it's so I can tell you like we have some neighbors ended up with a COVID case that someone got from work, brought it home, spread it around the household. At least one in the household has it now, and they're waiting on test results for others because they may have gotten tests too early, so they got to get second tests. Either way, they're locked down for two weeks. Blah blah blah. So our first thought was, what can we do? Well, one the least we can do is we can make dinner and take it over there. Well, in our house, that means Kim makes something good because no one wants to eat weird eggs I make. Or That's right. Here's here's a dogarito. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll just leave it on the doorstep. Like, Should I even want, put it on a plate? Nah, I'll wrap it in yeah, a paper Yeah, you don't towel. want my food, but, you know, so, so like my idea would be like, well, if I really want them to be happy, I'm going to Mod Pizza or something and getting them a couple of pizzas. <laughs> Like I genuinely wondered what you would do if if Kim's like I can't cook today I am frozen in time and you're like okay I got this what would you do I I'd, would I'd probably I, I I would seriously do the mod pizza thing <laughs> I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't make it myself I don't, they don't want to eat what I make I'm a terrible cook I'm horrible what you would make what would you make if you had to if like I had all the to, pizza stores are closed they probably have right. eggs in it um because I can cook eggs <laughs> hold on. Uh, Just a big pan of scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I can't think of anything cohesive. I can't think of a meal. I suppose I could real. I could sit down and go. All right. Well, we probably got beans somewhere, so let's get some beans out. Let's cook those. <laughs> God, this is just getting worse and worse. I know. I'm bad okay, at I'll this. Stop. I'm so I'll bad stop. at this. I just wondered. I just wondered, like, oh, Scott, I, could you bring me dinner? And I just wonder what you would bring. And then now I know it's beans and yeah, beans eggs. and eggs, beans and eggs. Okay. And Kim Good, and I, I'm ready. And, I'm ready and, for and, it. But see, we do this. It's important note here, by the way. And I don't know if this will have anything to do with your discussion today. But Kim and I, when we do this, is it is as a team. She's doing the heavy lifting on the cooking part. But when I say we took dinner to somebody. It, it really is like this team effort. It's like, all right, well, you talk to so-and-so and find out whether they're going to be home. Okay, I'll do that. What are you going to make? Oh, I don't know. I was thinking fajitas. Oh, sweet, honey. That sounds great. Maybe we can make some for ourselves as well. Like, she's definitely doing the brunt of the part that anyone cares about. But, so you're on the team. But we're on the team. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm the good. kicker. Okay. Good. She's you're the, the kicker. And you know what? Kickers yeah. never get hurt. That's but right. But we need them just as much as we need everyone else. Right. And okay. they can really blow it. In the wrong they moment. can there's a so you could drop it on the way to the door yep. there's so many options yep. okay yeah good it's fair and equal i was just checking <laughs> um okay so that was not really the point the point is this so okay this idea of taking care of others first mm. before yourself can it's going to be very common if we have parents listening um you know all of the all of the all of the ways other people need you and especially if you have a, like a lifelong habit, which, you know, maybe this emailer can relate to. And I've, I've gotten some other ones about this, too, which is um, just everybody's first. That's what they've done for so long, even as children. And often that's where it actually starts, um, where they're sort of caretaking a little bit for some of the adults in their life or siblings or something. Right. So making sure others are OK is so easy and common. Um, and then. What do you have left for yourself is, you know, whatever you have left. So we're going to use two terms here that I think can be, here's my little catchphrase for everyone to memorize, okay? Survive with Mm self-soothing, thrive with self-care. So we need to understand a little bit about what self-soothing is or self-comfort or, you know, whatever. Uh, That is, Scott, you're like, I should go on the treadmill, but I want to lay on this couch. Yeah. So laying on the couch is self-soothing, right? Okay. It's a rest. It's a break. It's 
you know, you're probably scrolling on your phone and getting a little dopamine to feel good, whatever. So that is self-soothing. It's taking yourself out of whatever the work you have to do or the stress of the moment to, to calm your nerves. Often we do this with escaping because it's so quick, right? I'm always amazed. I don't watch a lot of TV, but when I finally do, it feels like a tap is turned on in my brain. I'm like, oh, I'm leaving the planet. I mean, it's amazing, <laughs> right? And I think I'm really attuned to it because I don't do it much, um, but that's what we're doing. We're turning on a little faucet in our head and it's like, no, I'm in another world and I don't have to think about my world. And so those things are self-soothing. Now, not to, we're not gonna bash those. Those are, those are important things to do. If we don't ever do those, we can't ever get to self-care, right? Um, the problem is what these look like long-term. That's the difference between survival and thriving. Thrival. Thrival, word. thrival. Survivor, survival and thrival. Thrival. So if you want to thrive, <clears throat> self-care, we got to differentiate what these two things are. Mm. Um, it's, well, they, okay. So the soothing makes you feel good in the moment. And the self-care should help you stabilize. So think of it in terms of chaos, stress, frustration, emotional pain. Soothing is like the morphine injected right in the vein. And then the, the care looks like, you know, let's take your blood work. Let's do the workup. Let's, okay. And that's the running on the treadmill yeah. in the end, right? Because it's a longer term stability, mm -hmm. which that's why we thrive or we strive for that is because we, ultimately need stability. That's, that's the real antidote, um, that we are nourished, we're well rested, um, and we're feeling good so that we can handle that stuff. I mean, take one night of not sleeping well, mm. and then imagine doing the hardest day of work you have ahead of you or, you know, surgery mm -hmm. or driving a semi, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we are impaired. God, yeah. We're impaired and, you know, your blood alcohol level can look very similar to sleep deprivation at certain points, right? You're, you're unable to make sense, <laughs> like right now, mm -hmm. um, you're unable to spell. No, you just can't do the same kinds of things at the same level when you're sleep deprived, right? So just take that at a very 24-hour cycle of, of basic self-care. So we may stay up late self-soothing and now we've hijacked our sleep which is hijacking our self-care and hijacking our stability. Mm. I mean, everyone listening knows exactly what I'm talking about. You stay up late, you know you shouldn't, you're like, oh mm. crap, but you just keep watching whatever you're watching. You get to bed late, your next day, it's, you are paying. You're mm -hmm. paying for it, right? A hangover is a similar thing, right? Like it was fun, you had a good time, whatever you did the night before, and then the next day that you pay for that. So the idea is we want to not, just rip on self-soothing, right? That's not the point. We do need it and it's okay. So it's okay to lay on that couch sometimes. Um, but how do we transition that into more stabilizing types of self-care? Do you guys have anything that's A, worked for you or that you've heard worked for other people? <laughs> it's never worked for you. Oh man. Uh, Self-bribing. <laughs> okay. Tell me about that. Which is, uh, you know, if I if I get on the bike for a little bit, then I can have a, a piece of that caramel corn that's sitting up in the uh, the bag upstairs. Or if I, um, I mean, that's probably the best example of it because that's really the only self care I'm doing right now is getting on the the exercise bike. Mm, that's interesting. Maybe the only one I'm that leads with. to a question of like how we define self care, right? So sure exercise we all know is good for us so we're supposed to do that so that gets put in the category of yeah that would help me you know self-care mm -hmm. now is that always true not always i mean it's good to be in shape it's good to have healthy habits and all of that nobody's saying that's not true but self-care for you know i know people who ran themselves to heart attacks like mm -hmm. yeah. that's an extreme example but that's you know that's no longer self-care that's obsession um and maybe self-soothing right yeah uh, yeah right. like right mm -hmm. i've always said i could never be a long distance runner because i don't have enough things to think about like i can't do it <laughs> yeah that's so true and and, and so it is a yeah. maybe a form of self-soothing so that's where this thing these can flip really easily so eating really healthy and being super fit is that self-care or is that self-soothing for other maybe psychological reasons or or is it 
sort of a, a happy medium that just does help you than than is self care, right? So it's or is, it, is it the difference between something that makes you feel really good right now versus something that may be tedious or unpleasant now but has much longer term benefits? Yeah, that's that's why this is com- conflicting to me. Brian said it pretty well, or at least that's where my head is. Like the comparison to you use the oxygen mask first on the plane that's crashing and then you hand it to other people. That makes sense because it's happening in the moment and it's immediate and it's critical mm-hmm. and it's there's no, you know, there's no like six month, pr- uh, six month plan for that. You just are doing it right this second. And so that makes sense. Take care of yourself, then make, sh- make sure you're OK so that you can help those around you. But when you have that in the broader sense of like just life, then it gets weird, right? Because putting that mask on somebody or on yourself first might be six months of regular exercise and diet. But that's not happening in the moment, and the pressures aren't the same. So that complicates Art. things, right? Mm-hmm. It's a long term. I mean, I would maybe describe it as long term self love, mm-hmm. like that you care about you as well as all the other things that you care about. And and for a lot of people, like when, once I get inside their heads, I often find that there are parts of them that just do not love themselves at all. So to do any kind of self care is mm. anathema is that the right word mm-hmm. uh, i don't know my brain's not working today I clearly <laughs> someone needed more sleep anyway um self-care, self-care. i mean it's the opposite of what they want to do or how they naturally feel towards themselves so how they feel love and care and concern for the person next to them i mean i promise if we just had every plane crash for the next six months we would watch a lot of people putting masks on the other people around them and not themselves. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then plenty of people putting it on themselves and saying, screw everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd have <laughs> a lot about p- where people were at. But I do think there is there is often a block for folks. So when we talk about this, you may be going, yeah, this is so hard for me. I don't know why. Well, the, I don't know why I can't take care of myself possibly has something to do with this. And and often what I would do with somebody is help them sort of dig into where would they have gotten that message mm-hmm. that caring for themselves was not appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I have these small moments as a parent where I'm like, oh, this is where I could abuse them. Mm. <laughs> this is where I could jack them up for life, which is, <laughs> guys, yesterday we were helping this, it was a very sad situation, somebody move and it took four hours. So my Adam and I were gone and we were helping clean and help this family. And um, it was a really not a pleasant evening generally. And I said to the kids, I was like, oh, we'll be back. And I don't know, we'll throw something together for dinner. Well, that wasn't happening. So I said, hey, guys, make your own freaking dinner because your life is sweet compared to this family. You know. <laughs> anyway, and they made their own dinners and we were laughing because they all did exactly what we thought they would do. There's a lot of cereal that was had, you know, that kind of thing. And I think that is... Right. Not that's a one off of like, hey, take care of yourself. And is it good for them? Yeah, probably, right? Like, there's a balance here. But I can imagine, you know, a version of like, no, you make dinner for me or like you care for me in this way because I need it right now as a kid. So, so if you needed your mother to, to nurture you or help you or do something, and instead she said, no, I can't get out of bed, you do it for me, there is some very early development that can happen ab- around what my role is with myself and others. Um, what's okay and what's not okay. And these parts yeah. of us really get strong and, you know, your survival instinct is wrapped in there. Like, well, to survive, you've got to make sure everyone else is okay. Cause it doesn't matter. You'll, you'll still be there in the end, but it doesn't matter about you so much as it matters about them. Cause you need their love mm. or whatever it might be. So I'm, I just riffed on, maybe I'm making someone cry right now, sorry, but I just riffed on that can happen uh, very frequently. So if you really struggle with this, we all struggle with this to some extent, but if you really, really struggle and you can't figure out the blocks, it's probably because there's something really there um, that has trained you that you aren't as valuable as as someone else. And so get some help with that. Yeah. Um, Cause that's a big deal. Um, and then for the rest of us who just kind of struggle with like, Oh, I want, I don't want to get on the treadmill or, you know, whatever those things might be. Maybe we, we ought to back up a little bit and not make self care about exercise and eating to start with, because those things are loaded mm-hmm. and complicated in many ways. Um, and what if we made it more about just those simply like, or sorry, those simple things that bring us sustainable 
energy or stabilization. So think of something you guys do. Okay, give me an example of something you guys do that's self-soothing and then something that feels more like it's stabilizing and it can't be a bike. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so self-soothing for me was being really frustrated last night at some stuff and playing World of Warcraft for an hour. That chilled me out. Okay. It's, it was a soothing experience. It was like, ah, yes, the familiar mechanics and place and setting and stuff that I like to do, and I'm earning stuff. and I'm, I'm you know. Tasks you can complete that you know you have control over. Flying here, getting 12 yeah. Yeah. oxtails. And yeah, exactly. Like there's a, certain, there's a certain rhythm to that that I just grooved on, and it was soothing to me. So that was a self-soothing mm -hmm. moment. Um, I wish I could tell you a. Can you tell me how it was self care? Could it, could it, was it also self care? I um, think long longer maybe, term stabilization. Maybe um, it was. So okay, okay, actually, maybe I'll give you a better example of something that I just started trying that seems to help me at night. Although last night didn't help me very much at all, but some nights it has. Somebody told me, I can't remember who. Somebody online said, "Hey." Um, if you're struggling with sleep and your brain's just racing, you know, before you try to go to bed and you just cannot stop your brain from thinking about either everything you have to do or a billion other people or just whatever your brain's doing. Um, don't count down to a certain number. Just start counting. And he says, what happens is your brain will shift from hmm. managing all the problems to a task. And the task is to count. And when that's all you're doing is you're and you're truly focused on it, you're like one, two, three, and just really, truly counting in your head and paying attention to the number and then moving on to the next number that you'll it'll knock you out because your brain will give up on the other stuff and say, oh, we're doing a task now. And then it'll it'll, it'll just put me to sleep. And it did like it worked for me. It didn't work so much yeah. last night, but I was there were other issues last night. So but but for a few nights in a row, that's how I got to sleep went much quicker than I usually do. I just laid there. And I counted. And a couple times, get a little off track because some thought would come into my head. I'd bring it back and I would count some more. And I only get to like 25 and I'm, 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 I'm asleep. Yeah. It works for me. So there's an example, maybe a better example, that. of a thing that seems like it both soothed and took care of me. Because it was a method, however rudimentary, a method of calming my brain down when I need to get rest, get sleep at a time where that's just harder to do generally for everybody. Nobody's sleeping great right now. So, so that's, that's an example of that in a way me playing uh, Warcraft or any video game, but you know, there, a little bit that's comfort food because it's a thing that I've played and been involved with for so long since it launched yeah. 15 years ago and there's new stuff coming out. And so it feels uh, like there's some, also some freshness happening, but also it's like returning to a place you're familiar with and that you're comfortable in, that you know everything about, and you just can ease into it and find soothing. Is that self-care? I don't know. Maybe. It um, stabilizes you in the evening yeah. to some extent, right? Where the, you then sleep better or you are, you're, right? Like the, the um, cascading effect sometimes mm -hmm. of... Like you're not gonna not gonna sleep if you don't. Da, da, da. And and again, this is where we get in trouble with uh, maybe excusing some behaviors because, first of all, they all have the the intent is good, but we have stigmatized a lot of them, right? A lot of our self soothing behaviors are stigmatized. But but then are they giving you your long term stability? So if you need to drink a whole bottle of whiskey to soothe to go to bed you are actually not helping your sleep. You're making your sleep worse. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's other consequences, da, 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 right? So you can see where um, it can flip into a different area um, because if our goal is stabilization, some of those self-soothing behaviors really do take away from stabilization. Right. Um, so it could be both, right? Like, so you could play that video game that was both soothing and self-care because it was stabilizing. Great. So some of it is just being aware of what it gives you and and – um, sort of acknowledgement maybe of that can be just as powerful of, you know, I mean, it sounds funny and be like, all right, I just uh, hork that hot dog because it was, and I'm calling it self-care and you can, right. Mm -hmm. But it has to meet a couple things, which is it is making you feel better, which would not happen with me horking. Hot dog. Is, there, is there a permission difference between the self-care and the soothing? Because the, uh, 
I, I find that like, you know, the, the, the soothing might be crashing on the couch and playing a game, but the, something that's been, that worked for me yesterday was, uh, doing some painting of these little plastic, uh, figures that I've got. And if, um, when I, you know, getting myself or giving myself permission to step away from work for a little bit and go paint for half an hour or an hour was the hardest thing. And I'm wondering if that's like another sign of self-care versus soothing is the permission aspect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because think of the, if you think of what self-soothing usually is, it's not like you, you haven't planned it all day. Mm -hmm. You're just like, and I'm not doing this or mm -hmm. now I'm eating all the Oreos, whatever. It tends to be whatever the sort of the quick acting soothing event would be. Right. Um, and you're absolutely right with self-care. It, it is, it may feel indulgent. And again, that may come from what is, what are the voices in your head say about taking a half hour to go paint something? Is, is yeah. there, is, uh, maybe this is too on the nose, so ignore this, but maybe there's a dad voice in you that's just like, what a waste of time, son. I'm healing people at the hospital. Might be, yeah. <laughs> Could be. Uh, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's always some, some, maybe something that can kind of hijack the process of what is a thing that's good for me that, you know, and getting permission for and giving yourself permission is often very common, a very common one. Uh, well, it's hard for Brian and I, maybe people in our position and not that, not that what we do is hard. I don't want to, I'm not trying to pretend like we have it harder than anybody else. But the point is this, we don't have anybody for the confirmation. Things, things that make me feel better. And Oh, we lost Wendy for a second. Are you back now? Yeah, I think she had the Skype or the, the discord oh, delay yeah. and now she's catching up. To now all she's that. catching up. You there now? We can hear you now. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Am I? Am no, I you're good. You, you yep, cut out here. for a bit. Um, <laughs> but the deal with Brian and I are we have jobs where we don't have the confirmation that 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 moment is OK to take. For example, if you're at a company and you worked really hard and you're, you know, just cranking and you're you're an hour after everyone else left and you're still working and your boss comes up to you and says, hey, you've been kicking butt this week. Uh, I want you to take a day off tomorrow. Just just take the day off. That's a great you can get the soothing and the self-care out of it and the confirmation all at the same time because you're like oh not only do i can i do this and will do this but it's a not it's also approved permission. signed sealed and delivered by the guy who's in charge who says it's okay for me mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. whereas i don't yes. have that in my my head the voice of my boss is me and i'm the one saying you can't take a day off what are you talking about right Right. You We're know? both very difficult bosses to yeah. ourselves. <laughs> and I bet most people are like that if they work for themselves. Yeah, so. probably. Anyway, side note. Right. Yeah, no, it's really good. And 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 so maybe it's starting really small. So like um, first identifying what is a thing I've done? Maybe it's a hot bath. Maybe it's painting my figurines. Maybe it's a walk outside or whatever that feels good. Mm -hmm. I have to kind of get permission to go and kick myself maybe to get my shoes on or whatever, but if I feel better after. So start with that, make a list of those things. What, what makes me feel good? And then look at them and say, do I have permission to do these things? And then maybe explore like, do I, why don't I think I do? If you're over 18, uh, you don't legally need permission from anyone to do some of these things, right? Or most of these things. Um, but if you feel like you do, like, like think about that for a minute. How come? Why do I need permission to do it? And maybe that, so like Scott, you got a mean boss that lives in your head that says you got to work or you're gonna, your family's going to starve. And so you, you got to go, oh, it's that voice, that, that part of me that says, no, you need permission. So how do we work towards getting permission for some of these things? And we start with one. Start with one. If you're really bad at this, start with one. If you're good at this, start with five. Um, if you're an introvert, you, you got to pick what works for you. If you're an extrovert, you got to make sure. And, and for extroverts, finally, the world's hard for you. <laughs> you can't just gather, right? Yeah, that's true. Finally, the world's hard for it. extroverts. <laughs> First time. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean, though? Like, f tend to your whatever your own garden is. Make sure that's that's when you brainstorm, make sure it's those things. If you follow some person, that's my new word for influencer, a person, a person. on Instagram yeah. who um, is showing you their self-care and you're like, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Is it actually your self-care? So why don't you try it? Go 
have a unicorn latte and take a bubble bath. And if you don't feel amazing after, then it's not yours. You're following what other people think you should think is good. Um, is, is a unicorn latte an actual thing I can get? Is that a thing? I, I don't How know. How many unicorns have to die for one latte? <laughs> Wow, that's like when you find out you have to use three gallons for every uh, almond that gets put, turned into almond milk or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right, exactly. What a waste of almonds, anyway. So bad. Yeah. yeah. But like, really, like, again, like, find what really works for you. And I, and here's, I just maybe I'm repeating this way too much, and the emailer maybe is aware of what I'm talking about here, which is, what is the part of you or the voice in your head that makes this hard? Right. And that's until we know what that is and ask it to sort of give us a little space to try our experiment and taking care of ourselves, we're going to run into this wall again and again and again. Um, I mean, I think that's what the pandemic has highlighted is that none of us have a really good practice of this. We, we use busyness. We use concerts and going out and drinking and frolicking. Look at me. I don't know words. Um, in order to <laughs> avoid like our versions of self-care, a lot of self-soothing and a lot of distraction. Um, and we've sort of been forced to, to slow it down. And, you know, winter's around the corner. We're, we're staring right in the, the for void you, again. For you, mm -hmm. it's now. Wendy sends God, me this yeah, picture no or this video. I, I, You've got snow, like a foot of it or something. Six inches, six inches on Tuesday. And then today we've had a little snow and lightning and thunder it's it's a terrifying combo if you've never been in a snowstorm with lightning and thunder you you're sure that it's all over oh yeah <laughs> oh it's this bad. is where we all die <laughs> yeah this is I the mean, end it's fine this is the fine. end my friend the only end 2020 whatever <laughs> bring it i don't even care yeah you're ready um, for whatever it's okay so for. all right so let's do this let's make everybody do some homework and this mainly to the emailer is to sit down uh, you know how i love pen and paper and mm -hmm. make a long list or a short list of just like genuine things. Well, first of all, just do things you think might be self-care for you. Make a list of things that are self-soothing for you. See if there's any overlap. See if you just need permission and an attitude change to turn that puzzle you're working on into self-care as opposed to thinking it's, it, you know, soothing. that it's self-soothing. It mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be both, right? Because sure. self-soothing is not our enemy. Self-soothing is the only problem is when it's like, hard drugs and you're going to ruin the rat your life right mm -hmm. there's there there's a version of moderation in a lot of things that can be soothing and be okay um but what is and again the self-care line is very much what's stabilizing and what's longer term benefit for you the stuff humans are pretty crappy at doing um and then look at those lists cross out ones that are you really you know Okay, I'd like to, uh, you know, whatever. Like you're saying that because somebody showed a video of it. No, what do you really works for you? What do you, and you may have to do some exploring and trying. And then the final thing of just like, look at that list and listen, listen to what your head does. Does it go, uh, yeah, like that's ever gonna happen because you, you know, just pay attention. Who are the blockers that jump out and say, uh-uh, you don't get to self-care. Mm. Because self-soothing, you just jump right past the blocker and do the thing because it immediately helps you escape, right? Sure. Whereas these are these longer term, longer um, forms of caring about yourself and loving yourself, which in turn, and this gets back to the, the mom and the email and just the general taking care of others is it's just beyond true that you can do the things you need to do for others if you are okay. And when you're young and your mitochondria is still functioning in all of your cells, you can do both for a long time. You can take care of everybody else and ignore yourself. But there comes a moment where there's a reckoning and you can't. Mm. Um, and, and those people are never going to appreciate you as much as you're giving. And so the, the one that will always pay you back, will always, always take care of you because you've taken care of it is you. That's on a t-shirt now. Wear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's not, it should be. Get that That's out right. there. In fact, Wendy self, will do it. Self karma is a thing. Self karma, baby. Yeah, it's real. Uh, let us know how this uh, hopefully helps you uh, point in a direction, uh, L, who wrote in. And if you've got questions about your own kind of self care or if you've got suggestions for how to do it or broader questions about why you can't, we'd love to hear back from you at themorningstream at gmail.com. Hey, I got a I got an email from realsteps.org the other day, and that was nice. Uh, 
because are you going to join us or are you uh, going to not care about yourself? I'm going to not care about myself at all <laughs> and not join anything. But if you're out there thinking, man, I sure could uh, use some of these ideas, uh, both practical and, and, and uh, otherwise, well, guess what? Realsteps.org, take and sign up soon, right? I mean, you can sign up now, but... Right now. Right now. Sign up because we. this is our new November cohort. We have just two weeks before it starts. And so sign up immediately, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of fun and new stuff we're doing, plus some of the tried and true. We've figured out a lot of things. It's amazing. And so I have just, uh, you know, you know, when you read a Yelp review and you're sure. like, yeah, cool. It's so weird to have a review for your, about what you're doing. Yeah. Like, cause <laughs> therapists, we don't really do this very well. You can go online and kind of find out if a therapist is crazy or not or something, but it's not the same as a restaurant, right? Like, mm -hmm. Um, it's just not, so it's, it's just so fun to see <laughs> these people changing and doing amazing things. And I have changed. I have learned so much from them. It's amazing. I feel like just such a powerful group. So if you want to be a part, we would love to have you. And so sign up. You got two weeks. Go check it out. Two We're going to handle November together, the election, Thanksgiving. We got it covered. It's going to be great. Just well, the Thanksgiving after the election. My God. Yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, it's Where good this year. We can't gather. Yeah, this we can't. is the greatest combo. We can't be together. So, yeah. Brian, it's going to be fine. So, well, all the people that are sad. conservative in laws think we can. Well, <laughs> but if you're going to have, like, if you're going to have Thanksgiving, and even if you do some kind of Zoom thing, you're going to have somebody somewhere right. who didn't like the results and somebody somewhere right. who liked them. Right. And you're just, we're going to have, a f I hate to say it, we're going to have a few years of having to iron that grumpiness out. So let's yeah. all be like Spencer Cox and Chris Peterson running for the gubernatorial <laughs> seat here in Salt Lake City. Uh, Wendy, I don't know if you saw that video, but I'm going to send oh. it to you because it's amazing and everybody should do what they did. What uh, did they do? They did a video together where they just basically encouraged everybody to be nice. And uh, yeah. they don't, they're not running any uh, attack ads against each other. Instead, they made one ad together saying we don't have to hate each other to disagree. And we also... As much as each of us wants your vote, we think it's more important that we work together as a state and respect each other. And, you know, it's it's actually pretty great. I'm going to send it it's to you. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's very I love great. it. I'll send it all to right. you in a minute. Um, anyway, I'll so, vote for both of them. All right. Both both would get Wendy's vote, which is a federally illegal thing to do, but go ahead and do it. <laughs> uh, Wendy, <laughs> Wendy is also at Wendy Dunford on Twitter or on uh, Instagram, rather, so you can go follow her there if you want to. Wendy, we'll see you next week. Have a fantastic time. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye now. Bye. All right. In the process of ordering my uh, new hat that says "Make Pumpkin Pie Great Again." Oh, that's awesome! So I'll be well wearing done. that to Thanksgiving. Well done. I like that. Uh, <laughs> all right. A reminder: tomorrow there will be a PM edition of the show. PM, uh, where we yeah. well, I think we're doing apps. unless stuff doesn't get pushed to tomorrow for Pete's sake. Oh yeah, right. Hopefully Brian gets his stuff today. <laughs> oh so, yeah. That'd be ironic. The only time it finally shows up is right during PM on Friday. <laughs> of course, yeah. That'd be. Ugh, Horrible irony. That'd be annoying. Uh, but one way or the other, uh, that's our plan. So if you are a patron of the show at patreon.com slash TMS, you will benefit directly from said uh, PM edition of the show. We do it live. We also put it up on the feed if you are a patron. So go check that out, patreon.com slash TMS. And everything else you need from us, you can find at frogpants.com slash TMS. There is a grand tradition here on the show where we uh, have a song in the middle, but we also end the show with a song. And Brian, grand, two grand traditions. Ah, he, ah, ah. he has two, a list of songs. My Paul McCartney impersonation. Oh, it's very good. Two grand traditions. Grand. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. I'm surprised it didn't go Australian, but he has got a <laughs> vast library of selections. And tonight we get to hear another right. one. Or today. Yes, this one goes out to Jordan from Brooklyn. Hey, Brian, tis the season. Thought I'd suggest a Halloween seasonal favorite of mine. If you've played it before, if it's a bit too on the nose, any spooky cover will do. I leave it in your capable hands. Uh, well, thank you, Jordan. I did decide to go with something else because we have played uh, your request before. This this song 